Uh, hi everyone, we're group 22. I'm Trevor. I'm David. I'm Saeed. I'm Shadi. I'm Mohammed. Uh, we are Netco, the New England Treatment Company. Uh, so before we begin, uh, we'd like to just uh, give a couple of thank yous to people who helped us out with the presentation. Uh, so the biggest one has to be Gary Broberg, our mentor. Uh, he's the CEO of Practical Applications. Uh, without his help, this definitely would have been possible. Uh, he was with us every step of the way, provided us with a lot of uh, really helpful resources. Uh, professor Onis Hayden, uh, who's a professor in the Civil Engineering Department here, she's been our technical expert all uh, the way along and has helped uh, provide us with some information on this subject. Uh, Dave Dwest, the Director of Operations at Deer Island, uh, which is the facility that we wound up settling on. Uh, he was kind enough to take time out of his day several times uh, to talk to us about his facility. He was very open and honest uh, and always corresponded with us. Um, we should also thank uh, Steve Estes and Andrea Downs. Uh, these people are on the boards of the WAC and the MWRA. Uh, we attended a couple of their meetings uh, for more information uh, on both of these boards and sort of what they do in Massachusetts. Uh, and they were both very open in communicating with us as well. Uh, and lastly, uh, Professors Ben Treff and Fluger uh, for leading us through the course and the design process we've had. Uh, so what we're going to go through here today, uh, we're going to go through our project, uh, the problem mission statement, uh, our de design ideas, initial ideas, and background, uh, and the final solution we wound up going with. Uh, we'll detail that final solution. We'll talk about the proof of concept behind why our idea works. Uh, and then we'll talk about the safety of this facility and the economics behind it. Uh, we're going to be doing that uh, by going around the design wheel uh, that we talked about at the beginning of the semester, uh, starting with stating our problem, our design ideas, uh, and then selecting a solution, uh, doing a first build, which in this case is mostly theoretical, um, and then evaluating and presenting, which is what we're doing today. Uh, so the initial problems we found, our focus area was uh, water treatment. Uh, and we decided to focus on the area of Massachusetts. We thought it was local. We thought it would be a good application. Uh, so we wanted to try to keep it local if we could. Uh, so looking at Massachusetts, we found a couple of uh, sort of upcoming things uh, in the industry. So the first thing is uh, 40 CFR Part 503. Uh, so this is just a big regulatory uh, oversight document. Uh, but it really, what it really speaks about is establishing exceptional quality standards uh, for the water treatment industry that describes uh, acceptable analytical methods, uh, quality standards for the water, uh, and acceptable treatment methods. Uh, so they're anticipating that there's going to be changes to this document coming up in the future, uh, and that basically the standard for wastewater treatment is going to rise. Uh, so we want to be changing our facilities to adapt uh, to these anticipated challenges. Uh, and as well, uh, the report also mentions that the EPA uh, is continually sort of slashing funding and resources for water treatment. Uh, so anything we can do to reduce resource strain uh, and dollars uh, is a plus because it's going to be going down from the EPA, so we need to keep in line with that in order to keep our facilities operational. Uh, as well, we found the Global uh, Warming Solutions Act of Massachusetts. So this was passed in 2006, uh, which is after uh, the date of construction of our selected facility. Uh, so this talks about committing to renewable energy, uh, reducing the use of fossil fuels in Massachusetts in general. This is uh, like the Cape Cod wind farms are part of this initiative. Uh, so it's just a general commitment that uh, everything in Massachusetts is trying to align to. Uh, and as we selected a municipal facility, uh, which is operated on state dollars, uh, we think it's uh, necessary for us to come into line with this and mandate with what the state is trying to do. Um, so we wound up settling on the Deer Island Treatment Facility, which we'll talk a little bit more about um, in a slide or two. Uh, but our mission overall is twofold. So first, uh, we want to save dollars for the taxpayers in Massachusetts by reducing the operational costs at our selected facility. Uh, and second, we want to commit to using renewable energy uh, by installing a new thermophilic co-digestion process, which is going to generate methane to use as a renewable energy source for the facility. So what is Deer Island? Uh, this is our selected facility that we chose to try to implement a new process in. So this is an existing water treatment facility in Massachusetts. Uh, it's technically located in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, but it's actually on a peninsula at the end of Winthrop. I don't know why the land is considered to be in Boston, but it is. Uh, it's like three or four miles out across the harbor. Um, so the town of Winthrop uh, is its neighbor. That wound up being a slight issue, uh, which we'll talk about later on for some of Deer Island's operations. Um, but it is Massachusetts' largest uh, water serving facility. It services 43 uh, greater Boston communities, pretty much everything around here. Uh, goes out through Deer Island. It's processing millions of gallons of wastewater treatment uh, per day. So what Deer Island is, it's collecting wastewater from homes and businesses, 
and that's going to the facility, and it's uh, a tertiary level facility, so it's taking it through three treatment steps. Uh, the first one is filtering out organics down here, uh, and then there's some chemical treatment steps, and the wastewater is released into the ocean about seven miles offshore, uh, where it has to meet a certain quality standard, uh, and it just goes back into the environment. Uh, so the focus for our project is going to be on improving this step down here. This is where organics are filtered off of the process, and they go into what's called sludge digestion, uh, where some of the organic waste is broken down, uh, and it releases methane that can be collected. So, when uh, while founding our company, we were, we were uh, we passed through many ideas that shaped our current status. Status. Uh, the goal behind our ideas were to improve the deer and facility first, and to uh, generate our own profit as a company. Our first idea was uh, to introduce the ultraviolet light disinfection which is uh, a new technology used in order to treat and clean the water before it gets out from the Deer Island facility. Uh, it disinfects, uh, this technology disinfects and kills the bacteria before it gets expelled to the ocean. It would also help the, the uh, it would also help the Deer Island to meet the, uh, to meet the regulations and the standard requirements of uh, Massachusetts for the water to be dumped to the ocean. It has many advantages. Uh, first of all, it, it would reduce the, the amount of, uh, of the chemical treatment utilities in Deer Island, which would also co uh, reduce the cost of operations uh, in, in the Deer Island facility. In addition to that, it would uh, increase the efficiency of water dumped in the ocean, and it would uh, and a good feature of it is that it kills the bacteria in a very short time. Uh, our second uh, proposal was uh, to implement the gas scrubbers to the uh, to the facility. Uh, basically, it is a, uh, the ga gas scrubbers are the are a, pollu a pollution treatment device that w air pollution treatment device that would uh, clean the streams from small gas particulates. Uh, during the process, it has a precipitate where the gas. Uh, Gets into contact, uh, gets into contact with liquid. It has many advantages. First of all, it, it would uh, limit uh, the gas contamination emissions. It would increase the uh, the efficiency of air quality, and it would uh, and also it would uh, generate uh, methane gas, which is uh, one of our goals to meet the, the, the sustainability. For our third. Uh, an alternative proposal to the gas scrubbers was to introduce the co-digestion, uh, uh, the anaerobic co-digestion to, to the facility. Uh, it is not uh, implemented uh, much in the U.S. It is very, a very rare technique to be used. Uh, the anaerobic co-digestion is a device that adds up uh, organic wastes and the bio waste to the uh, to tanks in order to generate methane gas, or renewable methane gas. Uh, basically, it is considered a renewable biomass and a biogas collector, and it operates and works uh, at 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, it has many advantages. We just mentioned some of them. Uh, it, it reclaims additional fertilizers. It balances the nutrients. It, uh, it improves the, the, the digestion of, water, of wastes, and also it, it uh, produces the, the renewable gases in, in very large amounts. So as the company uh, met and the board uh, and the, the board of the company met, we, we decided to choose what's best for the city of Boston and Deer, the Deer Island and what will profit the company the best. So to, to agree upon all of the parties, uh, we decided to choose the co-digestion, uh, the anaerobic co-digestion. For us to know how to implement it and where to implement it in the Deer Island facility, we should know what's being held right now in it. Right now, in Deer Island, they are using the sludge digestion, which is the standard wastewater treatment step. It produces methane gas, but not in, in large amounts. So we are going to add the anaerobic co-digestion, which, which adds organic material to the digestion step. Uh, it would greatly increase the, the gas yields. But in addition to that, uh, in addition to the co-digestion, we are going to introduce the thermophilic co-digestion, which means we are increasing the temperatures 
the temperature up to 50% or even uh, 50 degrees Celsius or even higher from 37 degrees. As the, as the research indicates and as the figure shows, uh, as we increase the temperature in the co-digestion, the cumulative uh, biogas uh, production increases respectively. Uh, the the red the red uh, the red line and the in the in the figure uh, considers the 30 degrees Celsius. The green line is the 40 degrees Celsius, and the the purple line is the the 50 degrees Celsius. And we can see how how it is proportional with the gas yields. Uh, now with the theoretical modeling of Deer Island. Uh, first of all, in general, the food wastes are detected to, to contain almost 85 to 90 percent of uh, volatile solids. Uh, 20 percent of the methane uh, loaded in Deer Island is received from other facilities such as the ones in Quincy. 22 percent of the gas uh, of the power in Deer Island is generated from renewable uh, methane gas. If we are adding 150 watt tons per day or, one, or 500 watt tons per day to the co-digestion in Deer Island, we are going to increase the methane gas uh, production by 8 to 27 percent respectively. For the final solution, uh, the company decided to implement uh, uh, anaerobic co-digestion uh, treatment in the Island facility. And instead of running the process at 37 degrees Celsius, we are going to run the process at 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, in order to uh, increase the efficiency of uh, biogas production as recommended by uh, Professor Anis Hayden. Uh, so as a company, we are going to deliver the food waste using barges uh, to Deer Island site. Also, we are going to mix the food waste with the sludge provided by Deer Island, uh, with the sludge provided by Deer Island, and increase the temperature of the mixture to 50 degrees Celsius using a heat exchanger unit. After running the anaerobic co-digestion process, we are going to obtain the biogas and sell it to the island. Here is our uh, PNID. Uh, we are going to install four pumps and three major equipment, which are the mixing tank, uh, heat exchanger, and uh, <coughs> a digester. Uh, so as mentioned before, uh, we are going to, uh, the, the, the food waste and sludge are going to be pumped into the mixing tank. Uh, then the mixture is going to be heated up to 50 degrees Celsius uh, in the heat exchanger unit. Uh, the, 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 uh, the anaerobic co-digestion is going to take place inside the digester, and then we are going to obtain the biogas. Each unit has its own uh, <coughs> control system. In case a unit fails, uh, the valves are going to automatically be open or closed depending on the unit in order to prevent any major damage to the equipment. Also, we have uh, an emergency uh, relief stream in the digester. Uh, in our process, we don't have a single chemical reaction, uh, but we have several chemical reactions that occur inside the digester, uh, which, which involve uh, organic compound coming from the food waste. All reactions have, uh, all reactions produce methane. Since, since it's difficult to break down the composition of food waste uh, <coughs> and uh, perform uh, a material balance on the digester, we use the data uh, reported by the MWRA uh, in order to perform a mass balance around our digester. <coughs> so in, in the report, they have two cases. Uh, the first, in the first case, uh, the digester is fed with uh, 150 wet time per day of uh, food waste with sludge. And that is going to produce about uh, 205 <coughs> cubic feet per hour of methane. Uh, the second case, which is the desired case, uh, the digester is going to be fed with uh, 500 wet ton per day of food waste with sludge. And that is going to produce about 225,000 uh, cubic feet per hour of biogas. So for having the best uh, outcome out of this process, uh, what, what we wanted to do for our experiment, uh, we wanted a bench scale experiment, so basically having two bioreactors and incorporating the food waste and sludge in the bioreactors, and moreover uh, getting the uh, same bacteria, which is a mixture of uh, bacteria from the DRI in the bioreactor digesters, and ha having all of them under uh, uh, thermo uh, thermophilic conditions, which includes a mesophilic uh, control. Uh, but but the problem with uh, 
but the problem with that is uh, there are many problems. Uh, so mainly uh, uh, because of the high cost, in order to purchase a bioreactor, it will require a lot of money. And moreover, it's hard to, to obtain the bacteria and the food waste. Uh, let's say if we perform the experiment uh, for the sludge to remain the system, in the system, it will take around 22 days, which, uh, which is really long, and we don't have this time. And let's say like, we perform the experiment and we have this time, uh, the, the, there is not enough space uh, for the sludge and food waste in the labs. And moreover, uh, the sludge and food waste might uh, may be smelly as others and needs a good space for it to be stored. And so, so, so we have decided uh, to move on. And a lot of my teammates, we said that uh, let's like sim simulate the process. We, we don't need to do a bench scale experiment. Uh, but we found out that uh, doing uh, our, our experiment is going to be really complicated because like asthma and bioin, uh, they, they can't uh, contain the complexity of the sludge. The sludge has many uh, different chemical characteristics and moreover uh, they have all the bacteria that we want in our experiment. Uh, so so we, we have decided as a group to use uh, the MWRI report that was done by the team of UMass as our proof of concept, which is uh, really concrete. Uh, th this report was done in 2005. It was done in three phases. Uh, the first phase, uh, they have done it to determine the chemical characteristics of sludge and food waste, so they can uh, have, have, a have data and baseline for the whole experiment and compare it in the future. And in phase two, uh, they mix the fo food waste with sludge and so uh, to, to, to know its impact and how it can produce uh, biogas. So they, com they compare the results in phase two to the original results that were measured in phase one. And in phase three, uh, they have run a semi-continuous process. So basically they had uh, eight reactors, but they use, used only six reactors. And they, they, they varied the compositions of food, both the food, food waste and the sludge. And uh, in the end, in the, six, in, the, in the last reactor, the sixth one, uh, they found that 50% of food waste and 50% uh, 50, 50 of sludge is the optimal composition for having a greater yield of uh, biogas. Uh, moreover, the, this experiment was done under 37 <coughs> degrees Celsius at the temperature, and was uh, stirred constantly with 100 weight per minute. Uh, so in this graph, as you can see, uh, the orange line represents the 50 degrees 50% uh, of uh, food sludge and 50% of uh, uh, sludge. So uh, the, the orange line is 50% uh, greater than all, all of the other uh, compositions. And to, uh, to show that uh, this proof of concept is concrete and illustrable, uh, that we can illustrate it, uh, uh, the Orient was planning to carry out a pilot uh, Plant investigation, uh, but uh, due to logistical concern, they couldn't. Um. Uh, so, just talking about the safety of the facility quickly, um, we don't have a lot of outright hazards. Uh, the process is run at 50 degrees Celsius, uh, so heat <coughs> does have to be concerned, uh, but that's not enough to cause uh, burning or equipment wear uh, unless it's over really sustained. Uh, periods of time for the burns, and as far as equipment wear, uh, most of our equipment can handle 50 degrees Celsius uh, with ease. It's basically just like hot water that would come out of a tap. Um, <clears throat> in terms of our hazard, we have a full uh, hazard breakdown uh, in our final report. We don't have time to go through the whole thing today, uh, but I thought we'd just pull out a couple nodes and look at them. Uh, you know, so the major sense is looking at each node in your process uh, and trying to determine what's going to go wrong uh, if certain process parameters go out of control either way. Uh, and then coming to the end where you have design actions based on what goes wrong. Uh, so for example, based on higher low pressures in our mixing tank, um, we might need to add a pressure relief valve to the main tank, which is actually something we did during our design process to go back and add that uh, into our diagrams. Uh, for low pressure, we need to make sure that our pump control systems are linked so that if one pump shuts off, the other pump is also forced to shut off to avoid uh, under or over pressurization. Um, and for the temperature of our mixing tank, we have to make sure that we have a temperature control so that we're not exceeding that temperature uh, and creating a hazard. Uh, the one larger hazard we do have to consider is the actual sewage itself. Uh, it's not necessarily an exposure hazard. Uh, it can carry pathogens, uh, but it's not, uh, it's considered an environmental violation uh, if we were to have a loss of containment uh, and 
basically spill that like onto the facility land. Uh, so we have to make sure that containment is a priority. Uh, and so that's why we have uh, systems to avoid overpressurization. Uh, and we might have to consider adding uh, dikes or ditches around our eggshell digesters, which are pretty large, uh, to make sure that we're never going to have a loss of containment incident. <clears throat> All right, so for our marketing strategy, our uh, clear target client, at least for now, would be the Deer Island Treatment Facility. Uh, if this went well, we could potentially use the model on different facilities across the country, but for the scope of this project, we're solely looking at Deer Island. Um, a basis for our business model, uh, right now the New England Fertilizer Company operates out of Quincy, and it has a special partnership with the MWRA in that uh, it <coughs> All the equipment they use is owned by the MWRA, um, and they receive sludge from the digesters in Winthrop, uh, and they turn that into fertilizer and then they sell for a profit. So we're hoping to do something relatively similar. We would actually be operating the digesters that Deer Island already has and building some other things to facilitate the mixing of food waste and the heating it up before putting it into the digesters. Um, and we would sell our methane to Deer Island. Uh, and we plan to enter the market just by reaching out to the Deer Island executives directly. Uh, what makes us different? Uh, recent studies, uh, in particular, I think th the main study we found was from 2017 uh, versus the original MWRA study in Dakota just didn't happen in 2012, suggested that operating at elevated temperatures can increase biogas production by uh, around 50%. So we think that's really awesome and it'll help us make some money. And um, the Deer Island facility was planning a pilot study back in 2012, but they couldn't because they couldn't uh, use trucks to bring in food waste through Winthrop. Uh, Winthrop the town of Winthrop said no way. Uh, so the only option for them was to construct a dock and use a barge to bring food waste to the island, and they decided that that was too risky for them. But as a privately held company, we trust the science enough and think that there's enough potential uh, to make a profit in order to take out the loans and take on that risk. So. Uh, how much will it cost to build? Uh, we have an estimated equipment cost of around $2,195,000. Uh, the largest component of that is the industrial dock, which we got an estimate got an estimate of around $2 million from a public record sent to us by our mentor of a fuel dock that was built in Washington in 2016. Uh, we thought that $2 million was a reasonable estimate. Um, and based on that, we used uh, different factors from Towler and Sino to uh, generate a total estimated capital investment of around four and a half million dollars. Uh, the variable costs of production, it's actually kind of complicated. We've mentioned this in previous presentations, but uh, usually in this industry, uh, companies would charge a tip <coughs> fee to receive waste from waste collectors. So um, waste collectors would actually pay us to take the waste off their hands. Uh, however, because there's added complications with logistics in this case, because they would have to barge the waste over rather than driving it through Winthrop, uh, we decided we would just waive the tipping fee and consider our variable costs of production to be zero. Uh, as for fixed costs of production, we have uh, uh, two operators with supervision, overhead maintenance, insurance, altogether bringing us to a total uh, operating cost per year of around $280,000. Uh, so the amount that we plan to generate in terms of methane production based on the 2012 MWRA study, also accounting for the fact that operating at elevated temperatures will produce more, would be around $4 million. Um, we would have most of those savings go to Deer Island, of course, to encourage them to engage in this participation in the first place. And also, as stated, our goal is to save the Commonwealth money. We thought that 30 70 of the savings would be a pretty fair and generous split. Uh, so that would have us making around 1200000 per year. Uh, that gives us a margin of around $934,000 per year and a profit after a 21% federal tax of around $738,000 per year. Um, if we're assuming a 5% interest rate with monthly pay periods and payments of $60,000 each, that would give us a, a around eight year payback time. Uh, the $60,000 per month is sort of uh, an aggressive uh, payback strategy. Uh, effectively, we'd be putting most of our profit towards paying back our loans as quickly as possible. Uh, that number could be <coughs> extended if we wanted to 
save more of the profit to invest in other business uh, ideas. But that's out of outside of our scope. So moving forward, uh, the next steps for the company, uh, we'd want to do a more specific study on the amount of bio-waste available in the Massachusetts area. So most of the waste that we're pulling is coming from the Chelsea and Revere area. Uh, that's just where those industries are located for food production type of businesses. Um, so we want to run as much uh, food waste through our facility as possible because that's just going to give us more gas generation. Uh, but we have to pick a realistic number uh, that's not going to exhaust the actual available supply of food waste. Uh, in the community. So the 500 wet tons per day uh, is a very achievable number based on the study, uh, but we'd like to do a more specific study to see if we can move that number even higher uh, to generate more profit from the gas we're making. Uh, and the next step for us would be to construct a pilot plant uh, for, the for the initial testing. Uh, obviously, that's beyond the resources we have in this class. Uh, Deer Island actually thought about constructing a pilot plant, uh, but because of their logistical concerns with the towns of Winthrop, they never got there. Uh, so it would be probably the interesting next step for us to take as a company, we need to get some money together uh, and conduct a small scale to make sure that the thermophilic process uh, works <clears throat> as we think it should out of the lab. It hasn't been implemented in industry yet, so it would be important to do a pilot scale test uh, and then scale that process up into a final product. It actually mostly does not. That was one of my thoughts at the beginning of the process, uh, but it turns out that, um, so there is one fertilizer is considered, you can use like manure essentially, which is mostly dirt, so the energy value on that is pretty low. Uh, but it turns out as long as you're using food waste, like it doesn't matter if you have like animal waste or like banana peels or whatnot, it all pretty much seems to give about the same energy value. Um, so you mentioned at the beginning that you were looking at the CFR regulations, but the CMR just for Massachusetts specifically tends to be a little more um, specific than the CFR regulations. Did you guys take a look at what you're comparing to on a state level? I did not see the CMR. The CFR was cited in a regulatory report by the MWRA for the Deer Island Co-Digestion Study. Uh, so I actually wasn't aware of the CMR. I'm not sure why they didn't consider it. I'd have to look more into that. Okay. It could be that like, federal is more it's more stringent. Um, but usually yeah. the CMR tends to be a little more focused. I know, I think in our talks with David DeWest, um, he mentioned like a Massachusetts regulation that was going to be enacted, I think back when they were considering doing this, where the amount of food waste going to landfills would be restricted, like uh, restaurants and hotels and whatnot wouldn't be able to like use those means, and that's one of the reasons they thought they'd have a large amount of food waste available for this. Uh, so, don't know what the number of that regulation is, but. Oh, sorry, maybe I missed um, your guys' talking point on this, but you're proposing to barge the waste to the facility. Is that currently what they do, or how do they get the waste on? So currently, they don't bring in food waste. They take wastewater in through the normal, like a sewage line, and they're just filtering the organics out of it. So we would actually be barging, like, basically an add-on that we're going to throw in there, and then it's all going to digest. So how are you going to convince Deer Island, I guess this is more of like your marketing, so the, I know the reason that Deer Island was made was by court order, so they had to have the government basically tell them to make it. How are you planning to convince them marketing-wise to be able to shut down the plant, make this change, and then pay for those changes? Obviously you guys are private, so like the loans is fine, but like that shutdown time, is that going to be a big impact? We're not anticipating a lot of shutdown time because essentially what we're making is an add-on to the process. Uh, so we're making, we're making, we could make our entire process step without touching Deer Island. Uh, and then we're essentially just making a feed in to the digesters. So all we would have to do to shut down would be like a very small time to essentially install the link between our final tank um, and our heat exchanger and their digester. And then we could get it up and running again. And all that would it, it would be doing is generating more methane than it was previously. It's so also, the same infrastructure could be left in place for DR. It's also worth pointing out that as of now, and this is very helpful to our project, but the digesters on Deer Island have a lot of vacancy. So if we theoretically like hooked up lines from our tank and heat exchanger to digesters like one at a time, there shouldn't like they should be able to divert the sludge just to the other tanks in the meantime. 
you have questions? So uh, initially, you guys said uh, one of the approach we were considering was UV, right? Mm -hmm. You said UV kill bacteria very quickly. Do you have a sense, or how long do you need to expose UV to bacteria to kill them? I found it online. There was uh, I, I found I found the percentage that it kills. I didn't find the the amount of time. It said that it kills it very very quickly. It, it said that it kills 99.9 percent. But I didn't want to mention like the exact numbers. Yeah. All right. So the okay. the UV approaches. So like a <coughs> traditional chemical tank, right? You put it in the tank and it sits for a while until the chemicals kill the bacteria. Uh, the UV approach is basically you just get the water to flow up very thin and run over UV light, but that's just that flow time over the light is all you need to irradiate everything. Uh, so it's a really, really quick process compared to sitting in a chemical tank. Yeah. We also didn't consider that one for a very long time. I think we'd moved on to other um, options. Right. That was like one of our original ones, like way back when. Thank you. My other question is, uh, you said anaerobic co-digestion is not really used in the US. Is it used in other countries? It is popular in Germany. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that might be because these plants are privately owned in Germany, and so they're run a little bit more efficiently, um, and they're not kind of hindered by the government. Uh, whereas here, they're all run by the state, so I don't think that incorporating new technology to possibly cut down margins is a priority. So it's just now sort of being incorporated into facilities that are like being designed in California um, as they're going up. But I think when a lot of these facilities were constructed 10 years ago, uh, this was kind of still on the theoretical table. So they you know, it just wasn't really a consideration for the states building these facilities. Okay. So for the sludge, do you know what, what composition of your bacteria? Do you know what type of bacteria you have? We actually were unable to find it. Um, Deer Island doesn't have a set listing. Um, we have looked through studies that use a couple different types, but they all still use mixtures, and the studies actually do not cite the type of bacteria. I don't think it's considered to be uh, a huge variance in the industry. I'm not sure why, uh, but none of them cited specific uh, bacteria strains that exist. It might be just something that naturally uh, occurs in food and food waste, uh, and they're just kind of advantaging that in the facility design. So this brings me to another question. So you'd be bringing uh, food waste. Uh, I see you mentioned at some point the food waste will be given for free, that's right. So the way it works is um, in the industry, uh, the normal representation is so a, a contractor would collect, essentially collects this food waste. Uh, companies pay this contractor to collect it. And the contractor ta pays us to take it away from them. But because we have to barge the facility, essentially instead of a contractor paying us to take it away and then us paying right back to barge it, um, we thought it would be an easier business arrangement to waive uh, the contractor paying us and instead just have the contractor pay the barging company directly to ship it to us. So we're getting rid of the fee that we would charge so that it arrives on our doorstep for no cost. Why was Winthrop so against like having the food waste? It has very narrow streets. There's not like a very large highway that goes like to Deer Island through Winthrop. And it would have been a lot of trucks going through the town of Winthrop to bring food waste for the pilot plant. Um, yeah, so they just had a town meeting and were like, no. <laughs> At least that's the end. Uh, well, and the, I mean, the facility well, doesn't benefit Winthrop really in any way. Yeah. So they're kind of adverse to, you know, they're not going to make a sacrifice so that it runs better. Any more questions? Well, thank you. Mm -hmm.